Hello everybody, my name is Roman and it's Martin Watch House and thanks a lot for watching, for subscriptions, for asking your questions in the comments. Uh, I hope we will speed it up a little bit, lesson by lesson, because i am already covered all theory that you have to learn. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about aggregation function and it's going to be a very short video because I forgot to tell you a few things last time I was uh, we were discussing this. So you remember the sum, the count, they all work the same. For example, if you want to count uh, dates that are inside this period, you can say count and then date and these as number of dates. And because it's becoming an aggregation function, you need to re remove it from group by, and then you will see the table with a campaign ID and number of dates. And sometimes you only want to work with unique days. And in this case, you need to say distinct because distinct means, hey, go there, find unique dates and only count how many unique dates you have there. And it totally makes sense. You see here because it's I take from 5th and today is 9th. So I have the data for 5th of February, 6th of February, 7th of February, and I should have for 8th of February, but because I have no campaign that was active yesterday, I only have three days. This distinct give, uh, gives me the information that they were only three unique days. And I can, for example, say, okay, I want to see how on average, how much on average I spend with these campaigns. To do this is very simple. I need to take the costs and divide it by number dates. Again, what we do, I copy this, open the parentheses, close it, and then divide up in. Again, open the parentheses, copy this, close it, and say as average um, spend per day. Okay, and boom, I see average spend per day. It's 194 in this case, and it's 2,866. The difference is huge here. And I probably want to see only those that are really high. And for me, just as an example, let it be more than a thousand. And we absolutely sure that there is a campaign that spends more than a thousand, thousand in this day. Before we do that, let's make this number beautify. You probably work with Google Excel and again in Excel it's exactly the same way it's, as it's here. I put here word round and here I put comma two because I want to see two. Oh, oops, I made something wrong. I probably should have um, add Ah, okay. Again, that totally makes sense. I put here round, I open another parenthesis, then I put comma two because I wanted two signs after the comma and boom, I have a very beautiful data here. I have, if I want to have zero, I will put zero here and it's math ma mathematically correct. So it's not floor, it's not up, it's just how it should be uh, rounded if that would be a perfect mathematical question. And here I have a beautiful data. I want to see only those campaigns that spend more than a thousand. To do that, I go after group by and put having and say, okay, having average spend per day more than a thousand. And the difference between where and having is probably one of the most confusing things that ever existed in SQL. The difference is very simple, by the way. When you talk about the data that is in this uh, in this table, and uh, let me just go to original table so I can show it to you. Here it is, preview. Uh, to make this uh, code works, SQL goes through row by row in this huge table and does what you ask him to do. And if, for example, you put here, I don't know, costs more, cost more than thousand, it will reduce all the rows that have less than a thousand. But it's not correct because you have so many dimensions here that you probably will never hit a thousand at all because it divides by search partners, it divides by mobile type, but whatever, whatever, it's so many dimensions. Having, on the other hand, works with the data when everything is done. If you worked with um, pivot table ever in Google Excel, 
you download some report from Google uh, AdWords, you put it in Excel, and then you, oh, I don't need this campaign, and I don't need this campaign. This is what you ha what's happening here. You work with absolutely pure data, and you reduce the rows you're going through. When you work with having, you work with everything that is already done. So the table is, this code is done. The table is done. You have all the rows, you have campaigns, you have number dates, you have every spend per day. And this is just a final filter that is going to be put on top of the view. So the difference between this piece of code and this piece of code is just on a very final touch. So Google, um, Google BigQuery just reduce everything that doesn't have enough average spend per day. Here you can work with the names that you gave to your columns. And if I just make it simple, let's make cost one, clicks one, CPC one, just for, for a small example, you can say, for example, having cost one more than one, and that means that you work with the final table and say, hey, give me only those that have in this column more than one dollar or rubble or whatever spent per, in this case, per campaign. But you can't access an original cost. You remember that in this table we have a column cost. Uh, here it is. You can't access it because it was already aggregated. You remember when you do this, you end up with a column that is called F0 something, and you then you rename it in a beautiful way, cost. And if I do it even simpler for you, cost per campaign. So you can access cost per campaign in having, but you can't access original cost. And in where is exactly the same, because where happens before group by, before sum, before round, before count, before everything, it's original data you can't access uh, and cost per campaign more than one will re return you an, an error because there is no cost per campaign in this table, but there is cost per campaign in this table. I hope this is not too much confusing. Again, this is before aggregation and this is after aggregation in 99% 90, of the cases you use where and sometimes you use having and I will show you when it's happening. But again, this is a very useful thing and we're almost done with all possible um, ways of working with SQL. We have select, we have from, we have where, we have group by and we have having. There are only three more important things you have to know. One is join and it's going to be another video and two and other are so simple, I will just show them right now. And you will understand them just from, from the, from the, you will just understand them, okay? Uh, one is order by and then you say as exactly as a having, you use the final results and say order by cost per campaign descending or if you want to uh, use ascending order, you can also say ascending. For those who don't know what is ascending and descending, ascending is one, two, three, four, whereas descending is four, three, two, one. If you want to see the top spend, uh, the campaign with the top, top spend in the very beginning row, in the very first row, you say descending. If you want to see, I don't know, day by day results for and um, if you want to see day by day results from the first day to the end day, you say order by date ascending. Uh, I, I'm more than sure that it's very simple to understand. If you want to have s several fields, you just say and then campaign ID ascending and then CPC one descending and then comma, 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 comma. So first we'll take this and if you have exactly the same cost per campaign, it will take this rule. And if you have exactly the same campaign IDs, you, it will take this rule. It's a very rare case when you need more than two, but just for an example how it works. And the final last thing you need to know is limit. Limit says how many rows as a result you will see. For example, if I wanna see cost per campaign descending and say limit one, I will only see one line of uh, one most spending campaign. If I say limit two, 
I will have two more spending campaigns and so on and so on. This is just the filter when you just need to see the most spending campaign and you don't want it to download and, and to see like thousands of rows or you try and test some SQL from scratch and you just want to see how the data looks like. For example, it might be, okay, I want to see how it looks like in, um, let me, I don't know, oops, Google Ads, and then account basic stats. We haven't seen it yes, uh, yet. And I want to see, um, I don't know, just the 10 lines because I, I don't need more. I just want to see how the data looks like. Uh, okay, that totally makes sense. Because sometimes when you work with a huge amount of data and you don't put limit here and you see the results and it's like thousands of rows, your MacBook or laptop or whatever you use will have some hard time uh, showing this data. But with limit, it's very, very simple. Or when you export this data to some other source, for example, to Power BI, Google Sheets, Excel, Pandas, whatever, Sometimes you don't need the whole number of data, you just need the top 100 or 1000 rows. Again, in our cases, we are not going to use limit. Uh, we're only going to use it for test purposes. Um, what I suggest you right now, I suggest you to go to any stats uh, table, as I suggested you before, and try to use having. So you put under order by, you put having, and you only stay with those campaigns that have CPC more than two bucks or only with those that have uh, costs more than a hundred bucks a day. Or if you work with the criteria, if you work with ads, depending on what you're working with, try to use having to filter something that you aggregated. And in the very end, put order by cost or order by date descending or ascending. If you don't specify descending or ascending, it will by default take ascending order. That's all for today now, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my uh, channel, subscribe to my LinkedIn and leave your comments below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Love you and bye bye.